Okay, so good morning. So in the last class we looked at uh, the Clauchy's Clapeyron equation, which is the first latent heat equation. Okay. I promised you that we will start radiative transfer. Yes, we are going to start radiative transfer, but I felt that that second law of thermodynamics, Clauchy's Clapeyron, everything was too fast. Maybe we should solve a problem to slow us down and also to understand things better. So we will solve a problem involving the Clauchy's Clapeyron equation today for the first 10-15 minutes and then we will proceed to radiative transfer. All right. What will be the new problem number? What is that? 43, very good. So problem number 43, please take down the problem. Calculate the boiling point of water, problem number 43. Calculate the boiling point of water at the top of Mount Everest. Calculate the boiling point of water at the top of Mount Everest. You know the height? 8008 H equal to, sorry, Z equal to 8848 meters. Z equal to 8848 meters, close brackets. Okay. The specific volume of vapor is, the specific volume of vapor is 1.66 meter cube per kg. And the specific volume of the liquid is 1 into 10 to the power of minus 3, that is 0 0.001. The specific volume of the liquid is 1 into 10 to the power of minus 3 or 0 0.001 meter cube per kg, which is just like 1 by rho, where rho is 1000, all right. Hmm. Okay, do not ask me where it is, it is somewhere between the P0 and this Vg and Vf will also change with pressure, but then we will have to integrate and all that, that is not mess it up. So take some average value as Vg and Vf, use a Clauchy's Clapeyron equation, change the D to del, which I did in the last class, take a couple of minutes. So think about it, it is not straight, you, you cannot apply straight to the Clauchy's Clapeyron equation, some hidden fundas are there in this problem. Just think about it and uh, I used to ask this in quizzes earlier, so now I have asked this, so I cannot ask, so I have to look at a variant of this. One point. Okay, so uh, So at the top of Mount Everest, uh, Z is 8848 meters. So you can assume P naught.
Yeah, please tell me this value. Thirty one. Yes. Thirty one kilopascal. Yes. Point thirty one point. Thirty one point one k pa. Okay. So if you assume a lapse rate of five and a half, what will be the temperature at the top of Everest? No, this is not required for this calculation, but we, I, I want you to do something. So, T will be huh? Kelvin. What is rho? I will put it in brackets, it is not required for the problem. STP or NTP it is 1.2, right? So, you have got only 30 percent of the oxygen which is available at the sea level. So, you just cannot, so its breathing is going to be extremely difficult. Huh? Once you cross 3000 or 4000 meters, you will get the high altitude sickness. There will be enough oxygen which is reaching the brain, you will get headache and this. Some people go on these high altitude treks and they die also, right? You heard, I mean young people will die. So, with those acclimatization if you go, basically if you just sleep off on a snow capped mountain, the lack of oxygen at the end of the sleep you may just die. So, you should not sleep. <laughs> so, this uh, mountain climbing is very dicey. Okay. So, you got an idea why the windows cannot be opened in an airplane. <laughs> First of all, it is the airplane is 12 kilometers height, it will be minus 52, number 1, number 2 there is no oxygen. Okay, so, it is always the cabin is pressurized, we saw that in adiabatically if you brings it and all that then it will, it will reach the potential temperature and it will, people will be baked. So, it has air conditioning is also required, okay, cabin is always maintained at I think 85 percent of normal pressure and it is maintained at 25 degrees centigrade. Relative humidity is very low, so long distance flight some people get nasal bleeding and all that. The relative humidity is only 5 percent because they want to preserve their upholstery, seats, this thing and all that and they do not want condensation and the like of life of the aircraft and all that. Aircraft air is very bad. Hmm? Okay. So, this is not our main story, this is a side story. The main story is to get to the, what is that? Boiling point, correct. So, let us proceed with the the clausius clapron equation lv into t or by t is this correct what i have written is correct This T you can use an average T, how much is it changing? 303 to 254. So, do you want to use an average T? 
okay you might as well use now that now that you have calculated so average about 275 or 280 yeah just calculate delta t Yes, somebody should. Huh? Delta T is fourteen point. Okay, this delta T is nothing but when when the pressure is 1.023 to the power of 5, the boiling point is 100. So when the pressure is 31, what is this? So that difference is delta T. gives an idea of how to use the clausius clapeyron equation boiling point decreases with increasing height we go on to the next chapter radiative transfer <coughs> obviously radiation is affecting us radiation is responsible for keeping us alive otherwise we won't have such comfortable conditions outside okay the sun's temperature, the sun's size, the earth's size and the distance between the sun and the earth and the reflectivity of the earth, all these contribute to keeping the temperature between 255 to 275 depending on black body assumption and so on, which is responsible for the sustenance of life. Okay? There is no need to prove that the sun's radiation reaches us, that is why light is there and so on. We are always interested in day lighting and all that, cool day lighting, all this because we are it, it is natural for us to be comfortable with this. Okay. The first question we have to answer is why can't bodies keep quiet? Why are bodies radiating heat? Why can't they just keep quiet? Then one problem less no conduction, convection, radiation, only two modes we have to study. Why well, yeah, another radiative transfer okay, quiz exam and some scientists are working, professors. Ah, you said something. So because of the 
temperature difference. Temperature difference? Yes, sir. They, everybody, when it is in, uh, have a some temperature, it vibrates according to that. Difference. If there is no temperature difference, no radiation? Uh, no, sir. It should be above the absolute temperature. Absolute temperature, means? Uh, sir, where we define that the whole... Not absolute temperature. What, what are you trying to say? Absolute zero? Yes, sir. Okay. Any body above 0 Kelvin will emit radiation because of the rotational, translation, vibrational energy of the molecules, something called the molecular temperature. Because of this, it cannot keep quiet. So, this is a fundamental law of nature which is called the Prevost law. Don't read it as anybody above OK will radiate. <laughs> okay, anybody, okay, anybody greater than zero Kelvin. Okay. Suppose you are half sleepy and take down the notes, and then uh, before the exam, what is sir? What sort of statements is sir giving in the class? Okay. So zero. If you want to take zero Kelvin, it looks like okay, right? But I gave some spacing. Anybody above zero Kelvin will radiate. Okay. What is the nature of this radiation? That means, how do you characterize this? And are there any theories to characterize this? There are two. You know that? Theory. What are the theories to characterize radiation? Wave theory, particle theory. Wave theories are electromagnetic. <laughs> they try to explain everything to the wave, wave theory because the wave theory comes from classic physics, classical physics. But then the black body behavior could not be explained using the wave theory. It led to a dramatic failure at the hands of two most respected scientists of that time namely Sir Rayleigh and Jeans. Okay? And Rayleigh went on to get the Nobel Prize and all that. But he published the wrong distribution of the black body behavior. They did not give him for that, for some other thing. But so, uh, classical physics could not, beyond, could not go beyond a certain point. Then they had to, they had to introduce, they had to introduce this particle theory to explain the correct black body behavior. Okay? So, we will not say whether this is correct or that is, uh, which, Mm, which is correct, which is wrong, that, that is unending debate. Whichever is suitable to us, if you are able to explain a phenomena using either of the two, then it is okay with us. Okay. So, because uh, of the wave theory, somebody said, even if, even if you have to assume, even if you have to assume that there is no God, sometimes to prove or disprove many, it is necessary to invent one. <laughs> it is good to have that, so that we can explain many things. Okay? Like that, you have both the wave and particle theory, but of course, all these are verified by experiments and all that. Okay? Wave theory. C equal to nu lambda. C is the velocity, nu is the frequency, lambda is the wavelength. Three to ten to the power of eight meters per second in vacuum. That is called C naught. C naught by C. Refractive index. Very good. So, this is frequency 1 by second, huh? is that okay? Please note that SCC is not the SI unit of time. Yes, small s or small s, okay. SCC is not the unit. Kg also small k, 
small g, capital K is all Kelvin, KGS and all there is no unit called KGS, it is 84 kg, it is not 84 kgs, you can say kilograms, but the abbreviated form cannot be pluralized, somebody taught you this, hmm. some Mac professor must have taught you, no, in thermodynamics, okay, that does not matter now, okay. Lambda is basically the wavelength though I would love to have it as meter, meter is too big for us normally we settle down with micrometer okay. So, it gives you meters per second on the left hand side okay and uh, what is wave number is 1 by lambda huh? okay. Okay. Because of which you can have an electro that is what I wanted to show the internet is not working. You have an electromagnetic spectrum, right? So, this shows the decadal variation in wavelength so this is the lambda in micrometer this is 1 centimeter this is 10 centimeter correct agree Point 0.4 to point 0.7 micrometer is visible. No, I think I messed up. Huh? This is a visible part of the spectrum. Okay. 0.1 to 0.4 is ultraviolet, ultra is more but why is it ultraviolet, why is it called ultraviolet, it should be called infraviolet. The classification is based on the frequency rather than the wavelength, it should be infraviolet and ultra red, what we call it as infrared and ultraviolet, ultra is high no, okay. but they have somebody has classified it based on frequency, all right. So, then uh, 0.7 to 4 I think, 0.7 to 4, this is called near IR, infrared, then this 4 to 100 is called infrared, beyond this is called microwave. So, X rays will come somewhere here. Now, according to the particle theory, basically the quantum theory, E is equal to H nu, the energy associated with the particular radiation. Okay. E is equal to H C by lambda. Okay. So, when lambda is going like this, nu is going like this, huh? correct? Increasing lambda is towards the right side and increasing nu is towards the left side. So, very long wave radiation will have low energy, very short wave radiation will have high energy. E equal to H nu. So, the X rays have got high energy. So, 
the x rays are of interest mostly to physicists okay at the end, other end of the spectrum we got microwave which is also of interest to atmospheric scientist but of interest to communication engineers electric uh, electronics and communication engineers because they they do long distance transmission of waves through this their energy is very low so usually some uh, uh, modulation is done amplitude modulation or frequency modulation you have a signal plus carrier wave then it is demodulated then is broken down and this thing and you recover it okay so one side is physics one side is electrical engineering and mechanical engineers are in between and atmospheric scientists are also in between because for the range of temperatures we are interested only in some point 1 to 100 micrometers okay so this is the region of interest to us point 4 to point 7 is uh, critical for sustenance of life that's the visible part of the radiation the eyes are capable of detecting radiation only in the point 4 to point 7 infrared cameras your night vision cameras can which are used by army and all the many people uh, i mean uh, many agencies these can get pictures in the infrared part of the spectrum also all right now what is the h is the planck's constant h equal to Six point two six in ten to the power of minus thirty four joule second. It is the fundamental constant of nature. Okay, the whole contribution, the pro, uh, the quantum mechanics is that h is finite. H is not zero. H doesn't tend to zero. That's where the Nobel Prize comes. We'll talk about it a little later. Okay. Now, classification. lambda lambda less than lambda less than 4 micrometer is called short wave radiation lambda greater than 4 micrometer is long wave radiation so lambda less than 4 is uh, here so the radiation coming on to the earth from the sun the incoming radiation is it in the short wave or the long wave short wave so solar radiation but you all know some anyway we learn a little later through the wien's displacement law that uh, the earth is radiating only in the infrared part of the spectrum but you already have some background knowledge if you know that then you know that the long wave radiation is basically uh radiation from the earth that is reflected back from the earth the whole beauty is the constants of the atmosphere react differently to these two if they allow the incoming radiation to come through but they don't allow the outgoing radiation to pass to to get to the outer, outside of the atmosphere then there is a build up of radiation within this and then there is a mcp dt by d tau equal to outgoing minus incoming or incoming minus outgoing there is a build up that leads to global warming and all that we'll see uh, we'll see this a little later okay and this can the this effect can be uh, accentuated by burning more fossil fuels if you have more carbon dioxide then this characteristics will change okay these are the ghg gases all right so uh what about microwave microwave has no role in the earth so the earth's energy balance if you look at the radiation budget of the earth the temperature of the earth is determined largely by the incoming radiation from the sun and the outgoing radiation from the earth and how this reflectivity is changed or the, we call it as albedo how the reflectivity is changed by the various constituents okay microwave no role
but microwave is very useful in remote sensing. How? Microwave radiation is capable of penetrating the clouds. So if you look at the radiation coming from the surface of the earth or from the surface of the ocean, if there are clouds, okay, and if you keep a microwave sensor on the top of the atmosphere, the microwave sensor is capable of picking up the vertical structure of the atmosphere itself. Whereas if you keep an infrared sensor, the infrared sensor will pick up the signature only at the top of the cloud. If there is no cloud, it will go all the way and it will pick up the ocean surface. So it will give you, it will give you an idea about what immediately obstructs it. So it will give, but if you know, if you know the top of the atmosphere temperature through the infrared, you know that, uh, you, if you know the lapse rate, it is possible for you to calculate the height at which this cloud is available. And then using your fundas of atmospheric science, you can find out whether it is a cumulus cloud, this cloud, that cloud, whether it will rain and so some indirectly you can study atmospheric science using the infrared imagery also. Visible is the first thing which came into existence once uh, satellites were launched, they put the visible cameras and then they were able to take, take pictures of the uh, uh, clouds and all that and everybody clapped and everybody is very happy and all. But the funda is it is available only from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. The night time that visible will not work. Okay, so the cyclone uh, will not stop its activity during, okay, now I am switching off morning again, <laughs> become active. So it is continuously it is working. Okay, so this visible has got some, if, even if you look at uh, IMD pictures, visible will after 6 o'clock is gone. So only during the daytime it will be available. So visible infrared and microwave, we use these sounders and images not only to study the weather pa cloud pattern and all that. Actually, I am doing a lot of projects where from these uh, signals we can reconstruct the humidity, temperature and the water vapor and the cloud profile in the atmosphere. So this is called passive remote sensing. Okay? The microwave passive, microwave remote sensing is offered as a 8,000 8, level course or 7,000 level course in atmospheric science disciplines in you know, US or UK or whatever. So that microwave can be taught for 40 hours. Okay, so microwave uh, remote sensing is remote sensing itself many courses can be taught the remote sensing with respect to civil engineering with respect to topography with respect to vegetation and land use that's what civil engineers uh, they will look at land use patterns okay where it is dry where it is agriculture is this thing so you can look at agricultural productivity and change from satellite pictures you can look at forest fires using satellite pictures and so on so remote sensing is a big thing by itself remote sensing can be active or passive in the case of passive whatever radiation is coming, you are just picking up. In the case of active, it is like a radar. You send a signal and find out what happens, okay. So there is a radar in near Chennai, I told you, know, near the beach. So it will send out signals, it will, okay. If there is no rain, it will just, the signal will go out and nothing will come back. So if the reflected radiation is zero, that means it is clear sky, okay. Then the strength of the reflected signal will give you the size of the raindrop and this thing. And so as the reflectivity keeps on increasing, and then if you have a color pattern, blue is low reflectivity, red is high reflectivity. Yesterday, day before yesterday, if you have seen the radar pictures around Chennai, red, 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 there will be red and orange. That means there is heavy rain. So it is very sensitive to rain. It is not sensitive to ice or clouds. It is sensitive to the raindrop. You can decide the frequency. Normally, they take a frequency of, for example, the precipitation radar on the TRMM satellite has got a frequency of 13.8 gigahertz, okay, around 13, I think Chennai radar is also like that, okay. So, uh, remote sensing is a big thing by itself. So the, the cornerstone to remote sensing is radiative transfer, okay. You have to first study radiative transfer and then you have to get on to remote sensing. But now what about the nature of this radiation? Now we will have to do the quantitative description of radiation. to define a quantity called I lambda. Which has got the units of watts per meter square per micrometer per steradian. Okay. Watts per meter square is flux, per micrometer is per wavelength difference and steradian is the solid angle. I will explain all of this but before that please take down the definition of I lambda. 
the monochromatic intensity the monochromatic intensity the monochromatic intensity is the energy transferred by radiation the monochromatic intensity or the spectral intensity or the monochromatic radiance monochromatic intensity or spectral intensity or monochromatic radiance r a d i a n c e radiance is the energy transferred by radiation is the energy transferred by radiation in a specific direction passing through a unit area passing through a unit area normal to this direction per unit time per unit time at a specified wavelength okay planck actually got this for a black body as a function of lambda and temperature okay that i lambda the correct distribution which won him the nobel prize in 1918 for quantum statistics we'll talk about this a little later maybe on thursday's class now i i when this i lambda is integrated between two wavelength limits lambda 1 and lambda 2 so this is called intensity or radiance what with units is also equal it is the same energy contained between lambda 1 and lambda 2 the same energy contained between u1 and u2 corresponding frequencies or you can do it on wave numbers okay now physics people would like to work based on i nu but engineers would like to work based on i lambda okay so what is the connection between these two agreed if you forget this if you forget the sign so i knew this is correct yeah so i lambda is i knew c by lambda square this is correct dimensionally is it okay okay now i have to tell you what this solid angle is suppose this is a unit vector there is an elemental area da1 okay
da1 is the emitting surface and dan is the receiving surface there is an angle with respect to the vertical which is called theta this is d theta if you take a projection of this if it is falling on the xy plane or whatever this angle is called 5 okay so this theta is called the zenith angle you must have studied in the solar energy and all that and this phi is called the azimuthal angle so what is a radiation which is originating in a particular direction theta phi from a area da1 which is normal to this direction means we have to take da cos theta that is why the cos theta will always come in radiation okay so if you take this component will be da cos theta so we are finding out what is the stream of radiation which is coming out that is characterized by this i lambda then if you want to integrate between a particular theta 1 to theta 2 phi 1 to phi 2 and lambda 1 to lambda 2 you do the double integration triple integration and all. so what is per meter square per micrometer per steradian if you integrate with respect to lambda it will become watts per meter square steradian if you integrate with respect to theta and phi it will become watts per meter square then if you multiply by the da1 itself it will finally give you the watts which is an engineering quantity okay so from watts per meter square per micrometer steradian we go all the way up to watts sir already we are comfortable as engineers we are comfortable with watts per meter square flux we have so we have used flux so much why should we do this very good question but the answer to that question is this watts per meter square the flux is incapable of handling the theta and phi which are very important in direct very very important in radiation so the directional nature of the radiation which is spreading in all the 360 degrees which is characterized by two important angles called the zenith angle which is basically the zenith angle is from here what is this okay uh, is there some stick okay so if you look at the corner if you look at the this room okay so if you are talking about that stream of radiation i'm slanting it like this okay so this angle is your theta okay now if you take a projection of this and then it falls like this now you can't see you have to believe what i say so now that shadow shadow is making an angle which is this angle okay that is your phi so that phi fully it can be the 360 degrees the zenith angle is 0 to 90 it will take care of the other one but we are not talking about the full sphere we are talking only about the hemisphere because there is a surface it is receiving only from the other direction if it is a bottom surface you consider another hemisphere in this usually we do not worry about that unless it is a volume it is a particle of alumina or something which is in a rocket motor aerospace engineers will there is alumina particle burning in a rocket motor and all that in those cases we have to consider the full 4 pi and all okay so this is the uh, conceptual figure to give you an idea of uh, this uh, radiation streaming in a particular direction so it is very eminently described by x y z theta a point here which in the cartesian coordinate system can be indicated by x y z can be indicated this is r r theta and phi so this r theta phi is called the spherical coordinate system it is very useful in the study of radiation okay so we will stop here it's already 11:50 so we'll solve some interesting problems we'll calculate i i hope to complete the two basic laws namely stefan boltzmann and the means displacement law and we'll try to calculate the temperature of the earth the temperature of the sun and all these a maximum intensity of radiation of solar radiation all those problems in the next class